So Bethesda have just released a series of animated shorts set in the world of their upcoming game, Starfield. And each of these videos gives us a peek into what life is like for the average spacefarer in the game setting of the settled systems. So let's take a look at these videos and dive into what they reveal about the universe of Starfield. The first of these videos, titled Supra et Ultra, or Above and Beyond, gives us a closer look at life within the United Colonies, and specifically UC Vanguard, the main military arm of the United Colonies, which is Starfield's largest faction, an interstellar republic controlling vast swathes of the star systems that make up the settled systems. In the short, we are introduced to Kent, a space courier, who upon arriving in the United Colonies capital city of New Atlantis for a delivery, is amazed by the scale and luxury of the city. Wishing to make a life for himself in New Atlantis, Kent decides to put his piloting skills to use when he signs up to join Vanguard. Now this recruitment process is undertaken in what appears to be MAST HQ, MAST being the military, administrative and scientific triumvirate the governing body of the United Colonies. Now the reasons Kent and the many other people in the long line for the recruitment office would enlist within Vanguard are many, but of them three stand out. One of the leading reasons is that with service comes citizenship, allowing Kent to rise up within United Colonies society. And another reason is money, as we see when Kent takes on a series of missions for Vanguard, ranging from exploration of abandoned ships, to engaging enemies in space-bound dogfights. And as these jobs increase in danger, the rewards also increase, eventually allowing Kent to afford a grand apartment and a place amongst the capital city's elite society. That is until the law of adventure, the final reason many enlist, calls Kent back to the stars. We can also begin to notice a theme here that follows through each video, as each one of these shorts represents a unique style of science fiction embodied by each of the factions, with the first short representing a utopian yet somewhat militaristic science fiction. The next short, titled Where Hope Is Built, gives us a look at another breed of sci-fi, the Space Western. This short takes us to Aquila City, home of the Free Star Collective, a ragtag collection of freedom-loving star systems, and they split away from the United Colonies following the conclusion of the Bitter Colony Wars, some 20 years before the start of the game. And in Aquila City we meet Varna, a woman who lost both of her parents to the war, and is now looking to fix up her ship and take to the stars. While scouring the planet for a new part for her ship, we see how the colony war still weighs heavy on Aquila City, which was established in 2167, around 163 years before the events of Starfield. Despite being the capital of an interstellar collective, the city appears to be little more than a war-battered frontier town, plagued by crime just outside its very walls. With memorials in the city honouring those who fell for the freedom of the collective, and we also get our first look at the colony wars themselves, when we see a flashback of Varna's parents, who were both soldiers on the front line of the colony war, and piloted large bipedal mechs armed with heavy machine guns. That was until they met their match at the hands of a United Colonies missile barrage. And finally we have the short titled The Hand That Feeds, which gives us a view of the distinctly cyberpunk city of Neon a bustling former fishing platform that was transformed into the galaxy's greatest pleasure city when it was discovered that a local fish species could be turned into a powerful psychedelic drug known as Aurora, kind of like space skooma. And Neon is a city of contrasts. The city is populated by wealthy pleasure seekers and business executives from the various megacorps that call the city home, yet outside of the neon-clad clubs and high-rises on the seedy city streets. Neon City's street rat criminals such as Ada and Harper are forced to make a minor living robbing the partygoers letting loose in the city. That is until Ada saves an executive from the all-seeing Ryujin Industries. And for this act, Ada is offered work as an enforcer for the Megacorp, as Ryujin Industries is certainly not running off a squeaky clean business model, likely making their money in the narcotic trade of Aurora that the city has become so famous for. And throughout all of these shorts, we also get a look at the currency of the settled systems, with the protagonists of these shorts being paid in various quantities of oblong credits. Which of these origins would you most like to play as when Starfield is released? Let me know down in the comments and make sure to subscribe to Law Tours for future videos. Thanks for watching, catch you next time.